Welcome back guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you the settings that I use to get cinematic footage from the GoPro Hero 10. Now obviously shooting cinematic or artistic footage, a lot of it comes down to creative choices, but we're not going to focus on things like technique in this video, that's for another video. Here we're just going to be focusing on the best settings to get cinematic footage from your GoPro Hero 10. Okay, the first thing you want to do is change the video codec because, as we all know, H.264 is so last season and all the cool kids are now shooting in H.265. So you want to change your video codec to HEVC, which stands for the Painfully Dull High Efficiency Video Codec, better known on the streets by its cool nickname, H.265. Basically what this means is smaller file sizes and better video quality. Next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you've got your grid turned on. Now this is going to give you a rule of thirds grid on your rear screen. This is going to help you with framing and composition and following that rule of thirds. Okay, into the video settings. Now, we'd normally always shoot at 24 frames a second with a shutter speed of 1 over 48. More on that later. But modern NLEs are so good at interpolating different frame rates. I tend to shoot at 60 frames a second with the GoPro Hero 10 and it conforms perfectly onto my 24 frames a second timeline. And obviously shooting at 60 frames a second gives you the option to do some cool slow-mo. As for resolution, shooting 5.3K, more pixels means better image quality and of course more flexibility to crop in in post. Okay, moving down to Pro Tune settings now. ISO I usually lock between 100 and 200. Shutter speed, now this is where it gets interesting. We normally always observe the 180 degree shutter angle rule, but having tested this out extensively, I tend to leave the shutter set to auto. Now, while I'd normally never use an auto shutter speed, there seems to be a lot of really clever computational AI wizardry going on with the GoPro 10. And even at 60 frames a second with an auto shutter speed, with camera movement, I still tend to get some really nice motion blur. I'm not even going to pretend to know how this works, but it does. EV compensation, I tend to leave around minus 0.5. White balance, this is a really, really big one for me. Never, ever, ever use auto white balance. Why? Because auto white balance is the work of the devil and definitely ranks among the very worst ideas in human history. Your white balance should always be set depending on your scene. If you can't be bothered doing that, just set it to native and leave it there. Now for the lens, we've got a few choices, but I tend to go with linear plus horizon leveling. The linear aspect tends to get rid of the fisheye or distorted look that you get with the wide lens, and the horizon leveling is really good and apparently works up to 45 degrees. And even if your footage is really shaky, which it always is with handheld, the horizon level will keep that horizon nice and level. Hence the name. As for colour, we don't have a log option with GoPro yet, but I'd always shoot in the flat colour profile because this will give you more dynamic range and much more flexibility when you're colour grading. Stabilisation you're going to want to set to high or boost. I'm going to put it on boost here because as you can see, even when you're walking along with your camera, you're going to end up with really nice smooth footage. It looks like it's on a gimbal. And with that 5.3K resolution, it doesn't really matter about a slight bit of crop. Okay, those are my cinematic settings for my GoPro Hero 10. Obviously, 
everything's flexible and it all comes down to creative choices, but those are the settings that I use mostly. So I really hope you found this useful. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.